Yeah. Yeah, Esther. Yeah. <clears throat> Righteous and Holy Father, we do praise you and thank you for this beautiful evening and the new month that thou hast shown us, the Lord. We do praise you and thank you, Lord. Thank you for all your manifold, countless, numerous blessings that thou hast showered upon our lives. Lord, according to your promise, the promise says, where one or two is gathered in my name, I'm in the midst. Lord, we believe from the depth of our heart that you are in our, in our midst and you are in full control of our, of our meeting, O oh Lord, for which I want to praise you and thank you. Lord, speak to us according to our heart's need, O oh Lord. We give thee all praises, glory, and honor in the sweet name of our loving and savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. Uh, even as we are here once again, we want to give thanks to the Lord that he has made us his worshippers. The greatest uh, privilege that we have today is to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah, and he, he is seeking worshippers who would worship him in spirit and in truth. So whatever be our concerns, you know, we all have concerns in our lives. We are living this life. It is, uh, it is not an easy life to live a Christian. The Christian walk is a narrow path. Yeah, and uh, even if there are struggles and if there are testings, there are trials in our life, you know, we are able to surmount it because we have the God of heaven and earth with us. He is our, uh, our shepherd. And so we can confidently, you know, look to him, whatever be our problem. There may be a big mountain before us. You know, let the mountain not be a mountain because the more we look at our mountain, the more we feel troubled. So look at the Lord who is above your mountain, who is the creator of all things. And he, uh, like how David, you know, this comes to mind about David and Goliath. You know, he stood there so confidently because he stood in the name of the Lord. He did not stand in his own name. He stood in the name of the Lord. And that big mountain of Goliath in front of him was nothing. He was a lad, maybe about 17 or 18 years of age. So whatever be our mountain, whatever be our Goliath today, yeah, it has no power. That Goliath, that mountain has no power because our God is bigger than the mountain. He's bigger than the Goliath, okay? And he's God of the universe. So we are here in the presence of the mighty God who is king of kings and lord of lords. He's no ordinary person. He's extraordinary. He's the God, the creator of all things. So even as we cast every care upon him, that's how we are going to get our rest. So whatever is our pain, whatever is our struggle, maybe people are coming against us. Maybe we are having a, a problem in our uh, finances or maybe we are having a problem in our bodies. We are having relationship problems. Whatever be the problem, we just cast it at the feet of the Lord and we are looking to him who is above our problem. You know, when we, when we look at the storms, the storm will overtake us. But we, when we look to the Lord, the Lord is going to lift us above the storm. Yeah, amen. So we just give this time into the Lord's hand, even as we worship him. You know, we ask the Lord to change our hearts. Now, this is a, uh, it's a prayer where we are asking the Lord to, you know, to renew us. We are already, you know, a, a new creation. Uh, the Lord says, the moment we receive Jesus, we are a new creation. Yeah, amen. so now, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we want to thank you for this beautiful time in your presence. Hallelujah. Just welcome you, Holy Spirit of God. Come, Holy Spirit. We need you, Lord God, more than ever, Lord God. We need you more than yesterday. We need you, Lord God, even, Lord, even in our, uh, Lord, every moment of our day and night, Lord God. We know your presence is there, Lord. We want to experience the reality of your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We ask you for this day, Lord God. Come and minister to us, Lord God. We are your worshippers, Lord Jesus, and we want to worship you from the depth of our beings, Lord God. Hallelujah. Yes, Father. Hallelujah. We give this time into your mighty hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Change my heart, O oh Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. 
change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me, let me, me. This is what I pray. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me, help me, me. This is what I pray. Change my heart, oh God. Change my heart. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. May I be like you. Yes, may I be like you. Yes, Lord, it's our burning desire, Lord God, to be molded into your image and likeness, Lord God. Lord, this day we ask of you, Lord God, to forgive us of all of our sins, all of our unrighteousness, Lord. Lord, wherever we have grieved you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, Lord, hallelujah, we ask of you, Lord God, to cleanse us, Lord, with your precious blood. And we know it's only your precious blood that washes us and makes us, Lord, Lord, whiter than snow, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for your great sacrifice on the cross of Calvary, Lord God, that you bled and died for our sake, Lord God. You took our sin and our shame and all of our grime, Lord, all of our guilt, Lord God. Lord, all of our curses was carried by you, Lord God. All of our sickness and disease, Lord, all of our poverty, Lord God, hallelujah, all of our eternal death, Lord God. And Lord, you have given us life, Lord God, in all of its fullness and eternal life to come, Lord God. We want to thank you, Lord, for this divine exchange, Lord God, hallelujah. Even as we give you all of our cares, Lord, all of our concerns, Lord, we trust in the finished work on the cross of Calvary, Lord God, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that you have chosen us to know you, Lord. The greatest privilege that we have, Lord, is having you in our lives, Lord. We want to thank you for this time, Lord. Lord, we ask of you this time, Lord, anoint us afresh, Lord God. Anoint our listening, Lord God. Anoint our hearts, Lord God, that we will receive your word, Lord. And whatever you want us to change, Lord God, in our lives, Lord, let it all be changed for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's great. It's a great day to come into the presence of the Lord and to really look into his word. His word is, uh, you know, is so beautiful. It's because of his word, you know, we know the very nature and the love of God. Okay, last time we were at, uh, I'll give a, a short uh, background of what we had done last time. It was uh, in Luke 23, where we saw how, you know, Simon, one of the, one of the people, you know, one of the Jews from Africa, he, he was just uh, like many Jews had come from around uh, Israel. They had come for the Passover. And uh, Simon was there and, uh, you know, Jesus was in such excruciating pain because he was, he was uh, scourged on his back. He was the, the uh, crown of thorns and you know, he was bleeding, you know, right from, from his head and from his back. And he was made to carry that cross, that heavy cross, you know, and he fell several times. He was exhausted, full of agony and in pain. 
And then we are told that, uh, you know, in verse 26 of Luke 23, we are told that Simon was compared to carry that cross. And he carries that cross for Jesus while Jesus was walking in front. And there, were, there was a multitude of people. And there were many women who were crying and lamenting, looking at Jesus. You know, he, he was, you know, a man of sorrows, okay? He was full of pain and full of, you know, uh, groaning. That there was great pain and, you know, because of all of the, uh, the lashes that he received. And then uh, the women, the, the women were lamenting, looking at Jesus. And then Jesus, in that time of agony, he tells this, these women, he says, don't cry. Don't lament for me, but lament for yourself and for your children. He was telling them what was going to happen to their uh, descendants, you know, very uh, not in the very distant future, uh, there would be uh, some tragedy happening in Israel. And that's what happened in 70 AD when, you know, uh, the Romans came and they, you know, uh, burnt down their temple. And, uh, you know, the Jews had to run for their life. They ran in different directions. And, uh, you know, then he also speaks about his second coming. In that little passage, in that little passage, he says, and then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. Now, this is speaking about his second coming, when he would be coming and, you know, and the people who, did, who rejected Jesus will cry out to the mountains. They will say, fall on us. We don't want to look at him because we know that now is the time of our judgment. So all this happens and, uh, and then we are told that, and we know that, you know, uh, Jesus was in the midst of two criminals. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we know that, you know, uh, uh, that part of it. And uh, we see here, now we go to John chapter 19. Uh, and we are told about Pilate, you know, uh, Pontius Pilate uh, at the time of the crucifixion on the top of the cross. You know, what was written, there was an inscription written, which was uh, given by Pilate himself. And it was written, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Now, Jesus, uh, out of all the nations of the world, Israel is the only nation where God, you know, spoke to them. You know, they're the apple of God's eye, okay? Israel is God's firstborn son. That's the uh, uh, that's a description that's given, given in the Old Testament. He's the firstborn. Israel is known as the firstborn uh, son. And then even when Jesus was sending his disciples, he said, don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go to the Samaritan regions. But go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know, he specifically came for his people first. And then only you and I, who are Gentiles, you know. So, uh, so here was uh, Jesus hanging on the cross. And this was an inscription written on top of the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. And surely he is the king of the Jews. He, you know, he's a king of kings. And the Lord of lords, the king of the Jews. He, uh, and the king of the entire world, okay. But he began with the, uh, the nation of Israel. And then, uh, you know, and this was written in three different languages. It's told to us here. Then many of the Jews read this title. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. In three different languages, it was written, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. But, you know, the Jewish priests were very disturbed with this title. Because they did not want to accept him as the king of the Jews. They just rejected him as king. They rejected him as Messiah. They didn't want to do anything with him. So they go to Jesus. They go to Pilate. And they say, do not write the king of the Jews, but write this way. He said, I am the king of the Jews. You know, they wanted, you know, the world to know that this man is a fraud. You know, that he's not the king of the Jews, but he's proclaiming, proclaiming himself to be, be the king of the Jews. And what did Pilate say? What I have written, I have written. So what God has written in our lives, you and I, even if man curses us, if anyone who you know curses us, God says, what I have blessed, no man can curse. You know, no man can curse. Whatever is our problem today. Now, Pilate, Pilate immediately said, see, God is sovereign, okay? He wanted that vote to be there. Jesus, the king of the, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. 
and even those high dignitaries could not change that, you know, to mean anything else. Today, you and I, whatever is our problem, the Lord says, do not fear, my child, I am there with you. What I have blessed, no man can curse. What I have spoken about you, no man can change. My word will never change. So what we need to do is to hang on to his word, never give up. His word will never change. What you are, uh, you know, uh, believing in his word for yourself, for your situation, it will never, ever change. Okay. Like here, the word did not change. What Pilate uh, has written was God's actually sovereign, uh, you know, voice. You know, saying that Jesus is the king of the Jews. Then Pilate answers, what I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts. We know that, you know, uh, Jesus' garments were uh, distributed among the soldiers there. But there's, there was one tunic, we are aware of, that tunic did not have any seam. It was uh, woven as one piece. And that tunic, they could not do anything with except cast lots. And why was why is it so particular that God has written this here in the in the scriptures? There's a reason why everything is written in God's word. Okay, here uh, and they they cast lots for it. So who's it's going to be? And then this and why was it uh, why was it uh, you know there was a lot cast because it was given in the Old Testament. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Now, these, these soldiers, they didn't know what they were doing, but they were fulfilling prophecy. So, rather, there are so many prophecies in the Bible of the Old Testament, which was fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ, to show that he is the Messiah. Now, the Jews had to believe this. You and I believe it. But there are so many people who don't believe that Jesus is uh, uh, the only true God. So, here, you know, uh, because the Jewish heart is a very stubborn heart. And many of us also can be very stubborn. So here was the, the Lord giving in his scriptures that this is what actually my, uh, you know, the Messiah will have, you know, these are the signs you will see of the Messiah. Now it says here, now there stood by the cross, Jesus, uh, at the cross of Jesus, his mother. Now we know there were Three women at the cross. You know, all the disciples had run away except for John. John was the only disciple, the youngest disciple, who stood by the cross. And we are told here that uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his uh, his mother's sister, also her, her name was Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. So these three Marys were at the foot of the cross. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, now just see, in the agony, you know, being pierced, being uh, nailed to the cross, being nailed up on his hands uh, and his feet, and then the crown of thorns, and the blood was oozing, and his back, you know, against the, uh, against the cross, you know, uh, trying to take his breath and to, uh, you know, uh, to be alive. You know, you can see the agony that he went through. But even in that agony, He's thinking about the well-being of his mother. So how much, you know, uh, you know, the Lord as an example, he's a great example for all of us, you know, uh, uh, to honor your parents, honor your father and your mother. And this is what actually, see, at the cross, Joseph was not there. Now, Joseph was his stepfather, the foster father, the one who looked after him. But we know that God, our heavenly father, was, it was through the Holy Spirit that Jesus was born. But Mary was uh, a virgin and she was chosen to bear the son of God. And we know that at that point of time, when Jesus saw his mother, now she was, uh, you know, sort of helpless. You know, she was old. Maybe she must have been in her 50s at that time uh, or maybe less, less than uh, 50. But she, and then there was this disciple, John, okay? Uh, and he uh, describes himself as the well-beloved. You know, he always speaks about himself. John is speaking about himself. The one whom Jesus loved was standing by. And he said to his mother. So Jesus speaks, you know, looking at his mother and says, Behold your son. See, at that point of time also, he's giving over, you know, Mary, his mother, to, the, uh, to this disciple who was a believer, who was a strong believer in Jesus, okay? 
And then he looks to his, this disciple, John, and says, behold your mother. Now, I, I want to pause here and, you know, uh, clarify certain things because uh, in, in uh, the normal, you know, uh, many people believe that <laughs> the Virgin Mary did not have uh, children because only uh, Jesus and there were no other children. But that is not true because uh, I'd like to, you know, go to this one portion in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 1. And uh, we are told here, that after the genealogy and things like that, we are told here in uh, verse 24, then Joseph being aroused from sleep. We know that Joseph, you know, uh, he was a spouse. He was, uh, was to marry uh, Mary, but then he got to know that she was with child. And he wanted to secretly, you know, discard her. He wanted to secretly put her away because he got this, uh, uh, he got to know that she was with child. And then uh, we know that uh, Joseph was spoken to in a dream. When the, you know, uh, the dream, you know, the angel speaks to him and says, take Mary as his wife. Okay, so he takes Mary as his wife because he gets this, uh, uh, this dream from the angel saying that she's, uh, the, the child that she's bearing is, is uh, a child from God and by the Holy Spirit. We are told here, uh, then Joseph being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her. Now the word here, know her, means... He did not take her, you know, as his wife physically, okay? Did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son. So after Jesus was born, they lived as husband and wife. This very clearly says here. And uh, he did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son. So this, this clears that, uh, that uh, Mary had children after the birth of, you know, after giving birth to Jesus, okay? And then we are also told in uh, Mark chapter 4, no, sorry, Mark chapter 6, you know, uh, here I'll read this portion at the beginning of the uh, chapter of uh, 6, says, uh, and when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished. He's talking about Jesus. When he, you know, uh, when he was in the synagogue and he was teaching, many were astonished. You know, uh, he was in his own uh, uh, hometown. He was in Nazareth. When he had come, now he went to different cities in Israel. So when he came to his hometown, he, he went to the Sabbath. Uh, he went on the Sabbath day to the temple, to the synagogue. And then he started speaking. You know, he's and those gracious words, those uh, the words of wisdom that came out of him, the people were astonished hearing, you know, listening to him. And many hearing him were astonished, it says here, saying, where did this man get these things? Now, he was unlearned. He has not gone to school. But where did he get all this wisdom? They were all astonished. That is the wisdom of God that was upon him because he is the son of God. And what wisdom is this which is given to him? that such mighty works are performed by his hands. You know, so they, they marveled at the wisdom of Jesus. And then they started commenting. After having heard all this, you know, the wise words that came out of Jesus, they started commenting. Is not this the carpenter? Now, Jesus uh, took after the profession of his father, Joseph. He was also a carpenter, okay? And then they say, is not this the carpenter? And is... Is not he the son of Mary? And are, uh, uh, and his brothers, uh, James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. So it's very clear here. Number one, in uh, Matthew, it's told to us that Joseph took Mary as his wife you know, after he got to know her, means they had relations after Jesus was born. Okay, and these are the names of the three sons. You know, uh, the brother of, so Jesus had uh, half, you can call them half brothers because Jesus had, Jesus' father was God the father, but the 
father of James and Joseph and Judas was uh, and Simon was Joseph. So in a relationship with Mary and Joseph, okay? Those, those were the children that were born to Mary and Joseph. And are not his sisters here? Now in another place, the names of the sisters also are given. Salome <coughs> and then some other name, okay? There, there were three, uh, three uh, siblings, uh, three male siblings and two female siblings that Jesus had. Okay, and then we also see there's a place where, where when uh, in the John's gospel, we are told, you know, that the, his brothers did not believe in him. You know, they were living together. There must have been a lot of uh, trouble uh, in, uh, you know, in, in their house because uh, some of them did not believe in Jesus. You know, we are, we are told in uh, John's uh, gospel uh, and verse se uh, chapter 7, it says here, uh, after these things, the first verse of uh, John chapter 7, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jewish feast of tabernacles was at hand, and his brothers said to him, now this is in the house, okay? His brother said to him, you depart from here and go to Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you have, uh, that you are doing. Now, we have seen this because we have uh, crossed all of this in uh, John's gospel. So the brothers are telling Jesus, because they didn't believe in him, okay? They were telling him, why don't you, uh, why don't you go up to the temple now? You know, his brothers uh, tell him, and make yourself known, you know, because you're doing such great miracles now, show it off. Now, they were, you know, mockingly telling him this. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do this, these things, show yourself to the world. Now, his three brothers are telling him, you show yourself to the world. Why don't you go up to the temple? And it gives here a comment, for even his brothers did not believe in him. Now, here it's very clearly told to us that his brothers did not believe in him. So that's why at the cross also, we don't see his brothers. At the cross, whom we see only those who believed in him. That was... Mary, the mother of Jesus, who was a righteous woman. There was uh, the other Mary, that is Jesus' uh, aunt. And then the third Mary is Mary of, Mag uh, of uh, Mary Magdalene. And then John. John was the, the only apostle there at the foot of the cross. So now from this, we, we learn a lot of lessons. Number one, the, the love of Jesus for each one of us. The main thing that we can gather out of this is, now even once again, I, I, I would want to say, on that cross, the agony that he was going through, now he could have called for help, but he restrained himself only because of his love for us. You know, that is the great lesson that we learn. And then also, uh, we also learn how he, you know, uh, how he dealt with his mother. He did not leave her to that, you know, uh, in the hands of his brothers and sisters who were, you know, there must have been struggles in the family. No, it's not told to us. But it's obvious when we read that one passage in John chapter 7, where the brothers are making a mockery of him and telling him, uh, you know, you show yourself off, you know, that sort of a thing, because his brothers did not believe. So uh, Jesus decided that his mother is going to, you know, uh, be looked after by John, John the Apostle. And we are told that from that day onwards, John went to be, I mean, uh, uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to be staying with, with John and she was taken care of by John. But later on, we know, you know, in the Gospels, uh, later on in the, in the Bible, we get to know that James, one of the apostles, became a believer, okay? He became a believer and one of the books in the New Testament is written by the same James who is a half-brother of Jesus. So there are a lot of things that, you know, uh, were over the ages, you know, changed, uh, you know, unless we go to God's word, we will not know the truth. We will not know reality of what exactly is the truth. So that's why it's so important for us to, you know, uh, go through the word of God and know what exactly, you know, is the truth. And that's why Jesus says that. See, because why do people worship, you know, Virgin Mary? Because there are a lot of things that they have 
you know, brought into seeing that, you know, Virgin Mary went bodily into heaven. That's not recorded in, uh, in the Bible at all. In fact, Mary herself was with the disciples. She was in the upper room with them. She, she was with them in prayer. All these things happened. And if that was the purpose, then they would have, you know, Jesus, the, the early apostles would have worshipped Mary. So these are a lot of wrong practices that have come into the church, which we got to clear from God's word. Because God says, the Lord says, my word is truth. You know, apart from my word, see, my word is spirit and it is life. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So uh, I've got some other friends who my minister, uh, you know, Catholic friends. So uh, this is one of the points that I brought out, you know, because it is very important. See, because unless we know who Jesus is, see, Mary was a godly woman, but she was not sinless. She herself, you know, in the Magnificat, she says, I rejoice in God, my savior. And who needs a savior? All of us need a savior. Mary herself needs a savior because she herself, you know, was born in sin like all of us. King David says, I was born in sin. We all, because of Adam, we were born into sin. We were born as sinners. And without Jesus' sacrifice, there is no forgiveness of sin. There is no, without the shedding of blood, that innocent blood, that sinless blood. So today we have the confidence that we come to the name of Jesus. We come to him and we know that we are cleansed by his precious blood. So here we end. And I give it over to Dr. Teresa. Actually, we are not ending. We are beginning a new era. Yeah. Yes. Because uh, when you say that uh, we are reading the word and the word is written in the Bible, mm. we really truly need to read the Bible from the beginning to the end. Mm. Only ourselves better and a better expression of the life that we need to live mm -hmm. to show to the people around because yes. if we do not do this today mm -hmm. we will never ever be able to do it and we have that time with us right now earlier mm -hmm. yes, we were busy with work study education and everything mm -hmm. but this is the time you know we can you know just shut the door open the Bible, begin to read the Bible from the beginning to the end so that mm -hmm. false diviners, false prophecies, false priests, false nuns, they do not take advantage of our situation. Mm -hmm. And when they are taking advantage of our situation, we can break those curses, we can break those shackles, we can break those bondages that you know they try to put upon us. Amen. Whether you are a Catholic, whether you are a Hindu, whether you are anybody, our duty as a Christian is to ensure that the gospel and the good news goes into the world. Like the woman at the well, she says, yes, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. That is the excitement we should get after coming into this meeting, that we should be able to go out and take this word that I have seen the Lord. Today, I have learned that, no, I need to go back and read the book of instructions from the beginning to the end. Today, this is what the Lord wants me to tell. Every Wednesday, I'm going to get special instructions to make a better change. Because if I'm looking at every Wednesday, every Wednesday, I have achieved some landmark because I decide to leave everything away. I don't let anything come in my way, in my meeting, and in this moment, because this moment is important to take me from where I am to where I want to be. I do not want to be in the pit. I do not want to fall sick. I do not want to live my life in sorrow. I want to be like the woman to say, yes, I have seen the Lord. Mm -hmm. So this is exactly what I want to tell each one of you is, just feel that power of the Holy Spirit, you know, when the Lord says, can I drink water from your well? You know, we need to pour that water out to the Lord, you know. Sometimes serve it to even yourself, like as if you're serving it to the Lord, drink that water 
it makes you feel so good, you know, that the Lord is with us. We are not alone. We may look like we don't have our husbands, our family, our children or anybody with us. Mm -hmm. But having just the Lord with us, mm -hmm. we are more than conquerors. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. Very, very true. Yeah. Anyone else? That's great. And you know, uh, see, uh, like Teresa says, it is very important for us to know the scriptures, you know, to take time and meditate on the scriptures. Very, very important. You know, we will not go wrong. Once we meditate on the scriptures, we will know what God is uh, you know, talking about and who he is. And we, we are able to connect to him and draw closer to him. The other thing I would also like to say in the last meeting, when you spoke about how Jesus was being humiliated, you know, his arms were stretched out. And all he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they were doing. Now, how long can we keep our arms out? But I was actually just doing that the whole week. You know, mm -hmm. Father, forgive me, for I do not know what I'm doing. Forgive my husband, for I do not know. My arms were actually hurting. I don't even have nails. Mm -hmm. But I also remember the passage when the Lord tells that if you put your hand in the air, I will stop the war. Mm -hmm. When you put your hands down, I'm going to, you know, you're going to lose the war. So yeah. I was just keeping my hands outstretched and taking out and calling out all the names. Today, mm -hmm. and I'm feeling so good and so relaxed. You know, mm -hmm. that hatred that we have for people who, you know, taunt us and mock us and humiliate mm -hmm. us or, you know, speak something behind our back. It mm -hmm. makes us feel worse. But just forgiving them simply because the Lord says, I forgive you for I do not know what you are doing. I could take at least thousand names. Mm -hmm. I did it and I'm feeling so good. Yeah. Absolutely. Forgiving one another is so very important. It heals us, actually. When we forgive people, we get healed. So that is God's method for us to be delivered and set free. Yeah. He says, now bless those who curse you. Yes. Yeah. Pray for your enemies. You know, such a, it is such a thing that you've uh, seen it nowhere. It is uh, next to impossible, but with the grace of the Lord, we are able to you know, forgive our enemies and pray for our enemies and bless them. And all this happens only because we read the Bible. Because mm -hmm. we hear the word of God. If yeah. we never heard it, we mm -hmm. will never be able to do it and we will never be able to honor the word of God. Yes. And also the Lord says about the word, the word purifies us, you know. It is his word that purifies us. That's great. So over to you, Sabrina. We'd like to hear a few words from you. Kindly unmute. Unmute yourself and then speak. You have to unmute yourself. Sabrina, if you're going to say anything, you have to unmute yourself. Touch that. Uh -huh. Let that red line uh, come off. The red line on the speaker has to come off. Ah, correct. Now we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. As, yeah, I just wanted to give you a small testimony. Last week, I had gone do my test. Yeah, that hemoglobin was uh, I was a little low. So I got that and uh, sugar, sugar, this diabetes skull. Yeah, so both came normal. And I was thinking and I was praying that, you know, that uh, everything comes normal and it did come when i got the report i was so happy praising and thanking my god he heard my prayer and gave me a miracle so hemoglobin was 11 last time it was nine so it was 11 and the sugar free was just 99 that's all i was so happy very happy that my report came very good and normal so I give all the glory to my God because you are always there to answer my prayer. Amen. Amen. Suzette, how is your mother? Uh, Suzette, you're there? 
Uh, Susie, are you there? Uh, yes. Susie? Uh, anyway, in, anyone else? Let's speak to Rosie. Uh, Rosie has anything to say? Nothing. Just Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, Susie, are you there? No, she's not there. Acha, anyone else? Yeah. Yeah, Esther. With Esther. Hmm. Yeah, I can sing a song. We always wait for you to sing a song. Yeah. Okay, singing for the glory of God. <clears throat> Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness, shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us, set us free by the truth. You now bring us, shine on me, shine on me. Me shine, Jesus shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire. Blow, river, flow, flood the nations. With grace and mercy, send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Lord, I come to your awesome presence from the shadows into your radiance. By the blood, I may enter your brightness. Search me, try. Consume all my darkness, shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, spirit, blaze, set our hearts. On fire, flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display. Your likeness ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored your, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Wow, it's a beautiful song for the nation, you know, yeah. for the nation to be filled with the glory of the Lord. We welcome Kabir. Kabir, we're very happy to see you after such a such a long time. Oh, How are you? son. <laughs> yeah, Kabir, Kabir is a uh, baby when uh, we met first. Uh, the first born of uh, Dr. Um, Trees. Yeah, fantastic uh, child. Okay, and uh, now, uh, now Kabir, what are you doing? Your exams are around the corner. Uh, this uh, French orals and everything is last. Uh, uh -huh. so I'm, I'm in first year, no? so uh, my exams are not there now. Achha, not now. Achha. Okay, okay, okay. Very good. Anyway, so you, you've got enough of time to uh, 
you are having a college uh, physically, correct? Now, yeah. Very good. Very good. Five o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the evening. Oh. Nice to see you, Kabir. Nice to see you. Please for his admission no, in the college. No, very soft spoken boy. And, uh, uh, Shana has gone for classes. Yeah. yeah. She will be also joining us later. Acha, good, good. Nice to see you, Kabir. You want to say something? Yeah. <laughs> I am happy to be here. Yeah, great. Because yeah. when he heard the song happening, he came in and he knew that at least today he'll get a chance to see you because all these days we've not seen each other, no? Yeah, yeah. Correct. So uh, I just moved the screen for him to have a clearer look at what you're looking at today. Yeah. This yeah. looks absolutely same and as gorgeous as you were the first day we met you. Oh my, don't tell me. <laughs> ah, there's been no change. Now, now 16 past. You know, as tall as the table, but now he's become taller than me. Uh, oh. Correct. Yeah. He's become taller than you. Correct. Mm. Looking like a very handsome boy. Thank you. Stand and show how tall you've become. Uh, we'll not be, be able to see his uh, Yes, yes. Yeah, really. <laughs> That's... But even you have to stand, Risa, so that we can compare. Actually, there's no place to stand there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. Fine. Did you say something just now? I, I, my height is 5'8". 5'8". Mm -hmm. Wow. And Dr. Teresa, what's your height? 5'6". Oh, really? Oh, I think wow. is two inches more. So wow. we'll uh, sing one of those songs that we used to sing before. Yeah, my life is in you. Absolutely. We used to sing the song. Yeah, my life is in you. No, my strength is you. Crush the demons. A strong tower. The righteous run it. You remember that, no? We used to do it with actions. They were, uh, yeah, he was a small kid. Uh, how many years? He must have been about 12 years, I think. Yeah, 12 years. Yeah, 12 year kid. So we used to have lovely times together, you know, just singing praises to the Lord. Yeah. That's all we did in Bombay. We just, our situations were really horrible and really pathetic. Mm -hmm. But it was only by beholding the prayers and every Wednesday worshipping, mm -hmm. it changed the uh, situation be. and circumstances mm -hmm. for good. It brought down all the Goliaths of our life. And I think today's meeting we started with just that. Mm. Goliath fell down. Yes. Defeated. So and what, what, uh, we conquered almost every milestone, every curse was broken, every disease was healed, every bone that was broken. We mm. saw miracles after miracles and that's the reason why I 
treat this hour as one of the most holiest hours of my life. In come what may, whether it's my husband or whether it will even be Prime Minister Modi, please let this hour be as holy as it is because all our homes, all our people, all our children, you know, their lives will be multiplied. Yeah, great. That's really wonderful. Yes. Anyone else wants to say anything? So I think we can give praise and thanks to the Lord. All of us and will the praise the Lord together. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Not to get Suzette on the phone now. Uh, Suzy, are you there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you want to share, share something? Yes. See, because I told, I told everyone to pray for you, okay? I'd send a message to everyone to pray for you, uh, to pray for your mother. Pray mother. mother. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, actually, thank you, uh, all of y'all, because, uh, like, I was very uh, troubled. Uh, she, my mother, was uh, constantly falling down. And... Uh, and you know, I, I was uh, wondering, like, what is really happening. I just uh, prayed, and I, 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 I thought, like, you know, I mean, it was, it was there were a lot multiple uh, worries and troubles, and I mean, thoughts. But basically, I mean, I, I like God is good each time. Yesterday we went to a hospital, and we tried. Uh, I did. The, the doctor suggested a two x-rays and uh, I was constantly praying. I said, Lord, like let it not be like, you know, any fracture because she fell down like, you know, several times in one day also. And uh, I thought like, you know, and the worst thing is that she got such a catch in one of her legs. She's paralyzed. So her right side is uh, paralyzed and left left side is okay. So left leg got a sort of catch, the good leg, and that she could not um, walk only because that good leg only was caught up. So like uh, after that, I, I, mean, I was just praying that you know because doctor said that she would have to be admitted and all if she has a fracture. And uh, and you know, God was God is so good that. Uh, I was constantly praying even when the, the result came out and all. I, I, and uh, the doctor said that, you know, in one x-ray, there's something a little bit showing like a fracture, but other x-ray doesn't show. And he, then he said, that, you know, even if this could be a fracture, it could heal naturally. So I was just wondering, like, you know, how, I mean, I mean, it's, a, it's actually a miracle because... Uh, I mean, very much like within, like God took care of her. And, uh, and it's so good to know that, you know, God takes care of us very much, like, you know, in, in a very minute way. Like as he has, he knows the number of hair that we have on our head. So it was, it is such a minute thing, like, which could have happened, but God saved her again after the you know, several times. It always happens such. And again today I was getting so worried because she was not moving. And you know, to get her from one to another place. But then she she's getting better as, as the day goes. And I'm planning to take her to a rehab center for a few days and praying that she gets to normal you know, walking as she does in the walker. So uh, that also I was praying that they would take her into that center and I would get, I, I will get a final answer tomorrow, but mostly I believe that it's yes because I got a yes from the counselor today. And uh, just uh, thanking God for everything. Sometimes we have our own plans, but uh, God has his own plans. Praise God for everything. Thank you all for uh, really praying uh, for me. And Praise, my God. Praise God. 
I had a very uh, severe accident when I was in Mumbai myself. And uh, three days I was completely paralyzed. My hip joint had completely broken. Mm. And uh, even though it was known that it was broken, we could not even get to the hospital. My condition was that bad. Mm. And I don't know from where Gita comes into the house. You know, Gita has prayed and miracles have happened. Mm. So I request Gita to once again pray for your mom. Just like the way she prayed for me, because when she reached out to my hand and she said, okay, hold on to my hand and tell me what is it that you want to do? It was like that hand for that moment turned out to be golden. You know, all this while I just could not move my hand, could not move my body. I was in this excruciating pain and my hand is reaching out to her. And I'm holding it, and the next moment I know I was dancing. Praise God. Gita always prays for my mom. Yeah. So <laughs> then when she comes in, also prays on the phone. Pray for your mom right now in the midst of all of us because the Lord says, where two or three are gathered, I'm there and the miracles will happen. Yeah. Right on that time when she was praying, there were a few of my unbelieving neighbors who were there. They did not know what was actually going on but it did not stop Gita and me from doing what we wanted to do and they were also zapped to see you know what happened so I want all of us to you know pray that whatsoever comes out of Gita's mouth right now in the Holy Spirit be healed and miracles will happen one more time may like it says in Psalm 103, that I will renew your youth like an eagle. Mm -hmm. You know, let's press on to these kinds of words when the Lord says, praise the Lord, O my soul, and not forget the benefits, for he forgives all our sins, he heals all our diseases, he redeems us from the pit, he crowns us with love and compassion, and he renews our youth like an eagle. I want Gita, I want you to just pray right now yes. for her mom. Yes, Lord, we just unite our hearts together, Lord God. Lord, we call upon you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You said, call upon mm -hmm. me in the time of trouble and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things. Yes, Lord God, each one of us, Lord, today, Lord God, in one mind, one heart, Lord God, we bring up. Susie's mother before your throne of grace, Lord God. Lord, your very presence is here right now, Lord God. Hallelujah. To heal, Lord God. We send forth a word of healing into her, her, her hip, Lord. Hallelujah. That pain, Lord God, that she's having, Lord God, that immobility, whatever it is, Lord God. We rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus and we speak, Lord God. Your healing power is already at work, Lord God, and she is Lord, we declare that she is healed in the mighty name of Jesus, by whose wounds she is healed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, that your very power and your presence is upon her, Lord God, to set her absolutely free. Hallelujah. For whosoever the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you, Lord. We cover her by your precious blood from head to toe, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We just declare, Lord, the finished work on the cross of Calvary upon uh, uh, Susie's mom, hallelujah. And Lord, also we pray for each one of us here, Lord God. Also, we thank you, Lord, even for Kabir, Lord God, and Shania, Lord God, and Asif, Lord God, and each of our family members, Lord God. Lord, we pronounce, Lord God, hallelujah, your presence, your glory, Lord God, hallelujah. Lord, that each one of us, Lord God, would experience breakthrough, Lord, in our families, Father, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for our children who are doing exams, Lord, at this time, Father. And Lord, we speak, Lord God, your spirit of excellence would come upon them, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we want to give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you. So, sir, only one more thing. When I got all these things happening with Gita around, Till the time Gita came, I was reading all the Psalms from the beginning till the end. And by the time I came to the last Psalm, that is the time Gita arrived. 
So I would request you, you know, to open up the book of Psalms and just start declaring it in the house. And I want to see a miracle happening. I want to see your mother coming up all right. Amen. Amen. And mighty changes in your lives too. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much. It's been a God wonderful you. week. Yeah, God yeah. God. have a better week ahead. Yeah, all very is going to be Women's Day. Yeah, so be prepared in something even more better for the next women's meeting. Amen and praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Bye. Take care. Yeah. Take care. Have a wonderful week in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless. 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 God bless.